Welcome to a new edition of Explain Like I Am 5 Python. Today we're going to talk about list comprehensions. List comprehensions is a simple topic if it's explained correctly. The way we like to explain this topic to our students is by focusing on the concepts. The first concept we have to explore is about functional programming and favoring immutability. So, for example, we have a list of email addresses and we want to get the domain names for each one of these email addresses. An immutable solution could create a new list with these domain names instead of changing in place the original list, favoring immutability. The second concept is about the map function. The map function is about applying a transformation to our original collection to get a new collection out with the, or, all those elements transformed. So for example, you have a list of numbers and you want to get all these numbers squared. You're applying a transformation to each one of the original elements. So the way it works is super simple. We start with our original collections. In this case, we have squares and we're going to transform all these original elements into a new collection with each one of these elements transformed. The map function is important to understand that it will get you the same number of elements out as the ones that you had at the beginning and the order is going to be preserved. So we have the first square, we have the first star transform. Let's talk about an example closer to our code. We have a list of email addresses and what we want to do is get the domain names for each one of them using the map function. The first thing we're going to define is the transformation that we want to do. We have to define a function that will get you the domain out of the email address. So we're going to start with the first email address, sean at gmail.com, and we're going to pass sean to the transformation function. sean at gmail.com, it's going to get you out gmail.com. We're going to now move to the second email address. We're going to pass here mary at live.com, and now we're going to get here live.com. Finally, we're going to pass Rose here. Rose is applying the transformation and finally we have here again shemail.com. We are started with our additional collection. We're applying a transformation to each one of these elements and we're, get, we're getting a new collection out. Let's talk for a second about the transformation function. The transformation function should be defined for just one of these elements. It should be defined for a single element in the collection. So in this case, the get domain function is defined to receive an email address and it will get you out a domain out. So we have, for example, Sean at gmail.com. If it's applied to apply get domain function, it will give you the gmail.com. How is all these related to list comprehensions? Well, a list comprehension is just going to be a syntactic sugar on top of the map function. And let's see an example to understand it properly. In this case, again, we have a list of email addresses. And what we have here is the list comprehension defined. The way it works is super simple. We have defined the transformation get domain for E in our list of users. E right here is going to take the value of each one of these email addresses. So for example, E when we start is going to be the value tied to Sean. So E now is Sean and we're applying the get domain function to E which again is Sean at gmail.com. The domain name from Sean at gmail.com is basically gmail.com and is what we have right here. Now we're going to move the pointer to the second element, Mary, and now E is going to point to Mary at live.com. We're going to apply the get domain function to Mary at live.com and we're basically here getting live.com. So again, we are walking through the original list, applying the transformation to each one of the elements on the list and we're receiving a new list out. We are not changing the original list, but we're getting a new collection, so we have an immutable solution. 
The way to define LS comprehension is simple. Again, we have a transformation applied to each one of the elements. We have the original collection that we're referencing and for and in, in this case, our keywords. And basically we are defining a simple variable to, that we can choose whatever name we want for each one of these elements. The final result will be the list, the resulting list, with the transformation applied to each one of these elements. Take a look at the transcript of, the, of this video because we will be referencing our Learn platform which has exercises for you to practice about list comprehensions. Thank you for watching this video, share and follow us. See you in the next one.